Brand is this big, vague idea for what you want people to know you like. Reputation is something you can actually control. And your ability to go above and beyond and not necessarily do the insane psycho things that I do. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention to the cabin crew while we display the safety features and procedures of this aircraft in case of an emergency. So you don't know about me. You really weren't available. Got a future in my hands. So don't worry about me. Roasting and true romance. I'm on my knees back. I was like, who are they taking photos of? So good to see you, bro. What's going on? What's going on? Thought I'd surprise you. I love it, man. We got here a little What's early. What's up? What's up? Hey, man. How you doing? Just hanging out over there yeah. in the corner? Yeah, always. How's biz? Good, man. It's busy. You look good. Yeah, it's good. We should catch up for a drink. Yeah, okay. It's great to see you. Brand is a, a very vague way to talk about your reputation, yeah. right? Brand is reputation. So. If you have a reputation for selling a lot, your brand is gonna be as a successful real estate salesperson. If you have a reputation for sucking, your brand is gonna be the guy that's not so successful, right? Or the girl who's just not as trustworthy as she wants to be. So I, I really have all my, my team really focused on their reputation, which is easy to think about. Like it's easy to take control of your reputation. It's really hard to take control of your brand, right? Like what are you gonna do? Unless you have a billion dollars and you can go out there like Compass with their Saudi oil money and start like just buying commercials and billboards and paying people millions of dollars, then like by yourself, just focus on your reputation more than anything. Make sure you do all of your follow-up, make sure you do all your thank yous, make sure you go the extra mile, you shake the hand, right? You look people in the eye, you've got a great first impression, you go that extra mile, you do the dinners, you network as much as possible, and your reputation will help define your brand. At the beginning of the year, I put out a video because I named a neighborhood uh, in West Chelsea. If you know New York, if you've heard of Hudson Yards, and actually where Gary Vee's office is, Hudson Yards. Um, and then you've got Chelsea. And then you've got this weird area between 23rd Street and 30th Street on the west side of Manhattan, between 10th Avenue and the West Side Highway, that is like no man's land. So I figured, I, you know what, I'll just reinvent the neighborhood. This is now no longer Chelsea, this is not West Chelsea, this is south of Hudson Yards. Just like Soho is south of Houston, south of Hudson Yards, we're gonna call it S-O-H-Y, and that is so high. Branding is really just consistency, pushing it out there over and over. Personal branding is your reputation, right? Making sure that your reputation is the same over and over and over, so I just kept putting it out there. So high, so high, so high, so high, so high. We made these decals. If you watch Million Dollar Listing, there was an episode on it uh, this season, I think, um, and we made a video about it for the vlog. So Wang. Actually, okay, so everybody gets it. Like brand is reputation, reputation is brand. You gotta take care of your reputation, it's the only thing you can control. But then when I go into this story, the Wang story that's about to happen right now, which is the most insane deal story that I've ever told in my entire life, and I've actually never even told anybody about it because it's so fucking insane. Can we do like a freeze frame, crazy, this is about to be the most insane deal story ever? So Wang emails me, says, listen, um, I, I'd like to find an apartment. I rent near Hudson Yards. Can I come and see this place? I'm like, sure. Thank you, YouTube. So I said, okay, uh, let's talk. What are you looking for? He's a student, right? He goes to NYU, he's young, uh, from China. He, all he watches is YouTube, doesn't even have a TV in his entire apartment. Kind of like everyone in New York under the age of 30. Um, and he says, I want a place, my dad's gonna buy it for me. Think in the west side, I don't know, two, three, seven million, something like that. I'm like, all right. We meet, he's a real kid, he's cool, way cooler than I am. Um, he wants to see every apartment under the sun. 111 West 67th Street, find an apartment, it's amazing. Great apartment, asking $14 million. We negotiate it down to $11 million and his dad buys it for him. Fast forward to June and Wang calls me. Like, Ryan, we have a problem. I'm like, oh shit, what's the problem? He's like, no, 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 no it's a good problem. Uh, my dad now wants a place here. Thank you, YouTube. Like, okay, what's your dad want? Like, what's he, what's he looking for? He's like, oh, he wants an apartment, um, you know, probably on the east side, he's older, uh, somewhere between like 15 and $20 million. So we start looking around again, like the whole process all over again, except now we're not looking for Wang, now we're looking for his dad, whose name is Wing, okay? <laughs> so now I'm running around, uh, FaceTiming with Wang, looking at all these apartments on the east side, 
and he doesn't like them. And then the problem with the dad is dad's super busy and he keeps kind of going MIA a little bit. And so we see something and then I got to follow up and follow up and follow up and follow up on top of the son and on top of his business associate, Tony Chow. And if you've read my book, I wrote a book where basically the whole thing is just my secret sauce is the power of follow up, follow up follow through and follow back. I will follow up with you until you die. Uh, eventually we find this building on Park Avenue, brand new construction, and he really, really likes it through FaceTime. And there's a unit, and the whole building's brand new, right? So everything's kind of available. Unit on the 20th floor, asking a little over $20 million, and we negotiate it down for 20 million bucks, right? Uh, and then he disappears. So I was holding on to the deal with dear, dear life. And then one night, Two in the morning, I get a call from Wang. He's like, Ryan, sorry to wake you up. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no problem, Wang. Uh, what's going on? He's like, my dad is here. He wants to see the apartment. I'm like, ah, okay, let's do it. I'm, I'm the real estate guy, and I will do anything it takes to close a deal. And it's a $20 million deal, and I've been waiting for this guy for two months, so let's go. And I like, look at my wife, and I'm like, you know what? I'll just text her where I'm going. No problem. It's totally weird. I'm going to hang out with Wang uptown. Uh, everything's going to be fine. <laughs> so I go up there. He's staying at the St. Regis. I get there. He's very, very upset, right? He's super upset um, because he doesn't think the 20th floor is good enough for him. And he leaves tomorrow morning. I'm like, you know what? Uh, let's go see it. Let's go see it right now. So then, me, Wing, Wang, and Tony Chow um, <laughs> go from the St. Regis to this new building up on Park Avenue. Doorman is just totally bewildered. And I'm like, hey, just here for a showing. Um, <laughs> and we go up to the 20th floor and we look around uh, and he doesn't like it, right? He doesn't like it, he doesn't think the view is good enough. I'm like, let's go upstairs. Eventually we go up to the 36th floor, asking $40 million. This one he really likes, obviously because it's $40 million. And I'll never forget this. He goes to the window and he turns to Tony, then Tony comes back to me and says he really likes this because from here he can see his son in his apartment that he just paid $11 million for on the Upper West Side. I'm like, that's, that's a good dad right there. <laughs> okay. Um, and he tells me, listen, at $40 million, he's not gonna pay 40, so we're gonna have to figure out how to rene negotiate this one. Um, and through Tony, he tells me he's not gonna pay cash, right? I go to the listing broker in the morning. I'm like, listen, thanks for getting us in last night. I'm still awake, by the way. Um, he really wants the 36th floor. And he says, awesome, so does somebody else. I'm like, uh-uh, mm, uh-uh. Um, okay, well, we are gonna make an offer of $35 million. So we made an offer of 35. We actually negotiated it to 36, which is a good chunk down from 40. But we need financing, right? But Scott says he can get it done. He just needs the cooperation of Wing and Tony and his whole team. So I go back to Wing and I go back to Tony. I'm like, listen, we've got to move really, really, really quickly. But he needs this loan and he's not comfortable signing the contract, apparently, until he knows that he can actually get the loan, obviously, right? And Scott, I'm like, Scott, can you please, can you get this done? And he looks at me and he's never under promised, right? And he says, yes. I, Knowing who he is, knowing what he's bought here, we will figure out a way to get this done. I'm like, okay. So I call the listing broker again. I'm like, okay, listen, we're good to go. I call back to Wing and I go to Tony. Like, I, we can get this deal done. You're going to get the loan. Just need you to sign the contract. They say, well, we're, we'll sign the contract, but we're not going to send the deposit until we know we can get the loan. I'm like, mother of oh, fucking. Um, I go back to the listing agent. I'm like, listen, we need to get this deal done. I, he, it's the only one he's gonna buy and I'm not gonna lose a $36 million deal just because I need like a few extra days to get him comfortable with the fact that he's gonna get this loan. He's like, you need to get this deal done by the end of the day. And I'm like, motherfucker. Okay, so, um, uh, Wing, Tony, I need you to sign the contract today um, and don't worry about the down payment just yet. I'm gonna get you comfortable with the loan but we can't lose this apartment. I've got all my faith in Scott, right? Scott, we're gonna get this done. So they say, okay, they sign the contract, send it over. I then call back to the listing broker and I'm like, listen, uh, I've got a signed contract for you and I'm gonna get you the down payment, but um, he doesn't wanna do 10% anymore. He's only gonna do 5% and you've gotta be okay with that, but you'll have a signed contract today for a $36 million apartment. You okay with that? And he like, comes back to me, he's blah, 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 blah. Fine, if we can have the money in the next two hours. I say, fine, hang up the phone, call my banker, Say, listen, I need $1.8 million. That's 5% of a 10% deposit um, wired right now, right? Because I'm going to hold on to this apartment because I will go above and beyond for all of my clients. Two hours later, we were officially in contract on this apartment for $36 million, where technically I was in contract <laughs> on behalf of Wing 
And then, <laughs> and then Wing just kind of goes MIA, right? Yeah. So Wing goes MIA. Have you ever had a client that just goes MIA? You do all this work, right? And all of a sudden they ghost you. Yeah. It's a little bit tough when they're in China, um, which is a little bit far. I, so I keep following up. Follow up in every single way I know how. Go to his son. I'm like, listen, you, you're like, we're in contract right now um, uh, with my money, right? We've got to figure this out. Your dad has to close. He signed a contract. Like, let's, he's like, listen, but we just got to make sure the loan can go through. I'm like, yeah, but your dad needs to respond to the emails and the phone calls to fill out the paperwork with Scott who can actually get the deal done, right? That's kind of where we are. That's where we are. He's like, well, well I don't know what else to tell you. What are you going to do? Just like, I mean, you can go see him. Like, Scott, you ever been to Shanghai? <laughs> so we get to Shanghai, um, and we get there on a Tuesday. Uh, it's early evening. I have a meeting set up, thank God, through Tony Chow to meet with Wing first thing in the morning the next day on Wednesday, okay, to do all this stuff. So thank God he's actually listening. He's going to do it. So meet with Tony. We go there. It takes us to, like, the fake market. If you've been to China, right, there's like a fake market with fake iPhones, fake this. They had like this Ferrari phone that I thought was really cool. So I bought a Ferrari phone. It's like a flip phone that looks like a Ferrari, whatever. Um, like Scott got one thing too. We like traded our numbers. Um, anyway, then we go to this club, the M Club, with Scott, with Tony Chow. It's crazy, complete insanity. If you've never been to a club in China, don't. We're just sitting there and all I want to do is like get my money back and also get this guy to officially get his deposit in and get all the paperwork signed to actually get this deal done. And Tony could care less. He's just so excited that we're here from America at M Club and we're hanging out with him and he's showing us off to all of his friends and getting super, super, super drunk. Eventually, I lose track of Scott. I don't even know like where he went. I got kind of nervous, like maybe I lost him with something. Um, and then this club starts closing and Tony is really, really, really drunk. We go to his house, it's on this like massive golf course craziness. He goes inside and completely passes out, right? I'm in the clothes that I wore on the airplane to get over there. Now I'm in a house on a golf course in Pudong, right? On the other side of the river. And my phone is completely dead and I, I don't even know what to do. I don't know how to get out. I don't know if this guy's ever gonna wake up. And with or without him, I've gotta meet Wing the next morning because I have to get my money back and I have to do this deal. Also, holy shit, where is Scott? And I don't really know what to do. And then, thank the Lord, my Ferrari phone rings. And I totally forgot about my Ferrari phone and it rings and I pick it up and I'm like, hello? And Scott is on the other line. He's like, Ryan, I'm like, where are you? He's like, where are you? And I'm like, I, I'm in China. I don't know. He's like, how are you going to make it? Are you this? It's like almost six o'clock in the morning. I'm like, dude, I'm with Tony Chow. He's passed out. I put him on his stomach in case he throws up. I learned that from college. Um, somewhere, I'm in Pudong, but like, you have to come get me. I don't even know how to drive his car. I don't even know the car keys. He's like, okay, I'll figure it out. I hear him on the other line, on the other end. And he's like at the W Hotel, so clearly he's alive, which is great. And I tell them where I am. They understand. Okay, they're like, oh, you're at this golf course, etc. So we figure out, basically, if I walk out of the golf course, follow past this seat, past that, I'll get to the clubhouse, and I go to the road, and I can flag down a taxi, which is what I did. So we go. We make it on time. We go upstairs to Wing's office. We walk in. And who opens the door? Tony fucking Chow. Looks clean as a whistle. But we sit with Wing, we go through it. He signs off on the docs that he needs to sign off on. Thank God, I left that office with two checks, right? One to pay me back and another one for the additional 5% to put down, to put him in 10% down, to down payment on the contract on Park Avenue. We fly back, we both sleep the entire time, and we close like 37 days later. Brand is this big, vague idea for what you want people to know you by. That's really what it is, you know? And so your brand is your reputation. Your reputation is something you can actually control. And your ability to go above and beyond and not necessarily do the insane psycho things that I do, but to go above and beyond for your clients in a way that everybody else won't, to meet them when other people wouldn't, to pick up the call when you might be just a little bit too tired, to send that extra email, to do that extra thing, to get their kid that gift because you memorize when all of their kids' birthdays are or you put them in your calendar, you know when their dog was born with the puppies, all that stuff, that's your reputation.
and your reputation will then grow as the person who works harder and harder and harder than the next person. People will tell you what you're gonna be known for. Like, people tell me that I'm known for going by far above and beyond, and that kind of became like my thing, that I am willing to jump on a plane or meet you at 3 a.m. or whatever the, the issue might be, like I'm willing to do that. Um, and I just started turning that into content, both audio and visual and social and then YouTube and then podcasts and this, 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 this. And it's um, that reputation then became the brand. And so now we talk about it as brand, but it's really just it could be consistent with how people view your work. Purple scooters to private jets. We just wanted to remind you of the journey that brought you here. Thank you. We thought a model of the babe, oh my God. I had 1996 Ford Taurus in charcoal gray. That was my first car. That's, that's a company that pays attention. That's a company that pays attention right there. It's not any Hallmark card. Oh, didn't see you there. Oh, Vegas, what a speech. What a day. Oh man, got to change now and go back to New York City. In and out, one day, crushed it. 1,200 mortgage brokers. That's it. If you like this vlog, Subscribe, hit the bell, get the notification. Next week's vlog is going to be insane. It's going to be off the charts. I love you. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. Get my course. Get my book. Buy real estate from us. That's it. End of vlog! <laughs>